Ah, sí. Verde. Bien, ragazzo. Chao. Oh. ¿Cómo estás? Todo bien. Está arrivato. Eh, dobbiamo iniziare. Sí, sí. Nos vamos a saludar después, por favor. Salutiamo dopo, che Ciao carissimo. Ecco qua, buongiorno. Salve, ciao Alessio. Ciao, ciao. Se danno una mano. Gli è andato anche il contesto, Andretti. Eh. Ah sì? Sì. Dove mi devo sedere? Ok, mi siedo lì. Che miseria. Con un minuto. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. working for the responsible and sustainable development of the country. This meeting is focused on one of the most important points, not only for the meeting, but for all the people, that's to say the possibility to work. After so many years where the 
work policies have been based on uh, uh, support and interventions against poverty, which is fine, of course, which is fair, but which has been kind of uh, misleading in terms of support for the work. So the question is, after the pandemic, now what is what's happening, especially in the most challenging area of our country, that's to say the south of, wor of uh, Italy. So the, the word south working is uh, basically identifying the work in the south of Italy, and it recalls the title of an association, as uh, the president will explain later on, which uh, is focused on this specific uh, topic. So this is the result of a specific research carried on on the south working, so on the work on the south of Italy, carried out by uh, Randstad, which is one of the main uh, work uh, societies working in the uh, field of work and the uh, foundation of subsidia for subsidiarity. So the, we will present uh, this research and have a debate about this topic. So who are our guests? Well, first of all, Marco Ceresa, who is uh, who has been a guest of this meeting for years. He's a group chief executive officer of Randstad Italy, so he is in charge for all what happens uh, within this uh, company, Randstad in Italy. And again, this is uh, the most important uh, company working in the field of uh, work and jobs. So thanks for being here with us today. Then uh, Mario Mezzanzanica, who carried out this research, he is a professor of computer science and engineering at the Milano Bicocca University. And then uh, the president of the South Working Association, Elena Militello. And last but not least, we'll have also a representative of the institutions uh, we have here with us today Gilberto Pichetto Fratin, Deputy Minister of Economic Development. So we'll start with a presentation of the research by Professor Mezzanzanica, and then we'll have a debate with our guests and a final Q&A uh, session. So I leave the floor to Professor Mezzanzanica. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having invited me here. So first of all, let me thank the uh, the people that uh, designed this research and worked on this research. So uh, research which was the result of the meeting with uh, Professor Cereza that uh, had a wonderful experience uh, in Ariano, be focused on the development uh, of the south of Italy. And I'm saying that because uh, research activities in the, within the university field are not just the result of some ideas, but they are the result of the real relationship that we have with the world of work, of work and the, lab, the people that we actually uh, meet. So that's an opportunity to analyze in details some aspects. The, the topic today is to, take, uh, to have some benefits and to uh, focus on some critical aspects which are somehow underestimated and on the other hand trying to understand what may happen in order to have things changing. It is clear that we are living in a very particular moment uh, within the labor market and generally, more generally speaking, uh, talking about the social and economic uh, situation in our country both because of the uh, pandemic that happened and that we hope it's about to finish and we hope it will finish very soon, but also for the Ukraine war that, uh, of course, is a recent, is creating a lot of uh, problems and issues to many people. All these phenomena are involving the labor market, uh, and we're talking about the labor market that, from an historical point of view, has been uh, uh, very challenging with very critical uh, aspects. So there's a mismatch between uh, uh, the demand and the offer. So the, 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 the 
difficulties that uh, companies have to find uh, the, the good people, the most skilled people for their needs, but on the other side also from workers that uh, often are required to do to carry out jobs that are not in line with their uh, skills. Then salaries as well are still a challenge. Another important topic concerns the situation of the labor market in the south of Italy, where there are so many, the, the so-called uh, needs, which are the situation of people that are not working, they are not studying, and they, are, they represent one of the most critical aspects uh, in the south of our country. And on the other side, we are dealing with all a series of uh, gaps between the north and the south of our country. Let me stress from this point of view some aspects. The first one I'd like to underline concerns the birth rate and also the uh, migration phenomenon, which is an extremely relevant phenomenon in our country, which plays a key role in terms of uh, local inequalities and also in terms of uh, actual availability of skills for the companies. The Italian uh, Statistics Association uh, processed some data and provided some data concerning the aging process of our country. Uh, and these data show that uh, if we compare the situation of 2020 with the forecast for 2030, we will have to deal with a reduction by 2.2 million people aged between 20 and 64 years old. And this is the age range concerning the majority of the working life of a human being, of a person. And this reduction is expected to happen, so about 1.2 million people out of 2.2 million. This will happen in the south of our country. Then, a second aspect that I'd like to share with you, uh, and which is deeply connected to the previous one, concerns the local specialization. We are, in a, we are living in a country where the manufacturing ca uh, companies IT companies, financial companies are mainly focused and based on the north of Italy, while small companies, little companies and uh, public administration are playing a more important role in the center and the south of our country. And the consequence of this situation is that while on the north of Italy, we have a wide range of availability of uh, jobs and a huge demand for specialized skills, this situation is not actually present in the south of Italy. So we're talking about markets that are attracting resources and they are basically uh, forcing people to move from the south to the center and the north of our country. And then the thir third aspect which concerns the difference of salary, the, the gap between uh, uh, the gap of the salaries for the employees. So if we have a look at the data provided by the Agenzia delle Entrate, we can see that the uh, incomes between 8,800 euros and 19,800 euros are mainly focused on the uh, southern area of our country, while incomes between uh, 18,000 euros and 52,000 euros are mainly focused on the center and the north of our country, mainly on the north of the country. So these three elements together lead to a situation which uh, is stressing furthermore the gaps and the differences of the labor market uh, for, uh, in the different parts of our country. So this basically forces young people living in the south of Italy to move in the north of the country. This scenario has been going on for years already, and this requires a strong uh, reflection from several different points of view. And we shouldn't forget that uh, the pandemic happened within this context, including also the uh, smart working, introducing the concept of the smart working. So 
at the beginning, we had to deal with an emergency at the beginning and the central part of the pandemic. And now uh, we are moving towards the uh, so-called smart working as a, as a normal trend. So this has been a kind of a forced test that uh, we had to uh, implement. And uh, over the last couple of years, we had the companies that had to uh, understand what it means to uh, deal with remote working. And also, from our research, we, we saw that it's important to define and understand what are the different relationships in, from inside the company and outside the company as well. So basically, the relationships that companies have with their suppliers and their customers. The results show that uh, every company had the opportunity to uh, verify what are the best solutions and conditions. And there are different scenarios. We interviewed mainly companies uh, with medium and big size uh, working both at the national level and at the European or global level from certain points of view. And it emerged that uh, from these companies, we are getting some feedbacks on the best practices, on the skills that are required or on the areas of the companies which may be involved by this uh, uh, so-called uh, remote working, so the smart working. The research also shows that uh, over the time, companies will more and more rely on this tool in order to achieve their goals and their strategies and to implement their strategies. And it's interesting to see also the perspective and the points of view of workers. What does it mean for a worker to work from remote? What does it mean for a local community to develop areas where uh, that can be this remote control, uh, remote work uh, being developed. So this is very important. What happened during uh, the pandemic? And then I'll leave the floor to my colleague of the, uh, the South Working Association that will share with us her experience. Well, basically, many people during the pandemic went back to the places they moved from in order to uh, to go to work, so the university, uh, research centers, which, as I was saying, are based in the north of Italy. And these people moved back, went back to their uh, or origins, basically. And there, after a first period of loneliness in their house, many people started looking for and started developing uh, spaces to work where people coming from different companies could have had some relationships with other people. And this shows that working doesn't mean only uh, carrying out a task, but in order to, do, to, to carry out your tasks and to contribute to your company, the relationships play a key role. From this point of view, Many working places uh, were born promoting relationships and at the same time uh, allowing for the development of new entrepreneurial ideas and new concepts. We collected some uh, information, data, and experiences of people that developed these uh, uh, activities and involved local communities to support uh, those activities or even to promote and to push companies to support these activities. So I'm talking about little municipalities that, uh, for me as well, this was, at the beginning uh, they were uh, unknown, like uh, Agliano, which is the municipality uh, that uh, Dr. Ter Professor Teresa will mention, but also Tursi, Licata. Uh, which is maybe well known only for the TV character and the uh, book protagonist Montalbano and the experience of the city of Trapani as well, but many others as well. And I'm quoting this because I think it's important to understand that something happened 
in places which were kind of uh, uh, not involved before uh, by the work, the labor of mark, the labor market. And I think that it's important to be aware of the fact that companies shall more and more try to develop the, the concept of social responsibility within their policies. And I'd like to conclude by saying that it's clear that all these attempts, all these trials are the result of a bottom-up strategy in order to meet the needs of individuals that in a certain moment had to work alone from remote for their company. All these initiatives provide an answer to all a series of critical uh, aspects. Again, the uh, importance of uh, territories, finding skills, and keeping people and skills on the territory, the development, the sustainable development of the labor market. Let me add a further remark. There is an element, there is a factor that, uh, in my opinion, is extremely important. I think that we may need to change the approach because until this moment, uh, people moved towards the companies while we may need to start thinking about the possibility to have the companies going towards the people. And from this point of view, the pandemic and the constraints of the labor market we have been mentioning showed that skills and know-hows in certain areas cannot be developed uh, without an end. So basically, the university and school system shall uh, generate skills that sometimes don't want to move in order to be uh, e exploited at their best way. So what we saw from the results of this research is a real development of a new approach which actually finds an answer to the problems of the labor market. So these are attempts which may lead to a potential future development. Of course, we will have to consolidate these experiences. And on the other hand, we shall also try to understand how the tools that we have available, which of course are important, like the uh, National Recovery and Resilience Plan, can become tools that uh, promote the growth of the labor market, which will be able to uh, focus on the local areas and to uh, find the most skilled people which are required by companies and uh, to proactively take part in the development of our country. Thank you very much. Allora, data questa ricerca, chiediamo alla dottoressa Militello. I'd like to ask now uh, to Elena Militello uh, what is the role of the South Working Association and what is the uh, future that uh, you see in the south of Italy after the pandemic. Thank you, thank you very much, and it's an honor for me to be here, so thanks for having invited me here. I'll continue to talk about the research that uh, the professor just mentioned and I'd like to briefly show you what uh, we what we mean by south working and why south working has been created in order to uh, provide an answer to a bottom up uh, approach a bottom up phenomenon uh, that is basically dealing with the the phenomenon for which young workers that in the past moved in the north of Italy to look for better opportunities for, of study or of work because of the lack of opportunities from in their uh, in their original area. So basically, the south of Italy or the uh, center of Italy. But generally speaking, I think uh, also movements 
from Italy to foreign countries with these so-called intellectual uh, migrations, which accounted for about 42% over the last few years. So from the beginning of the pandemics, when uh, the social aspects were involved, so we had been in, obliged to uh, and people have been obliged to, to stay alone. All the people that moved away because of uh, their studies or their work found themselves asking uh, themselves what to do next. So since there was the opportunity to, to work from, uh, from remote and for the the luckiest people that had the opportunity to uh, carry out their work uh, from a remote position. So basically, from one day to the other, we uh, we had to deal with this uh, emergency smart working version, which was the first version of the smart working. Uh, and this situation was unexpected by the public administration and by many companies. So basically, uh, we suddenly found ourselves to do uh, from home what we were used to do from our office usually and this situation led many young people to go back to their house to their uh, to their village or to their uh, to their area or even to choose different areas to move on so in this way we had to question uh, the model that we have always been following until that moment and we found out some new communitarian approaches that emerged in the very moment in which we were obliged to stay at home. So within this context, hundreds or thousands of young workers the so-called intellectual uh, workers, so again, uh, having the possibility not to have physically present on their uh, working place, these people uh, started this phenomenon. So we created this uh, cultural uh, movement, which then became uh, an association for social promotion with the aim of creating something positive out of that uh, negative and tragic uh, moment and looking forward for a future uh, without the pandemic. So we started studying the community uh, and the most critical aspects, the needs these people had and also what they were uh, expecting for their future. We started developing some potential solutions for the most critical uh, aspects that we uh, detected. So. The smart working, the so-called smart working, uh, as it's been defined by the University Politecnico in Milan, was aimed at moving to a model that we can define as a win-win model. So basically if, uh, allowing mutual benefits both for the companies on the one hand, so aiming at increasing their productivity, but also for workers that uh, would like to manage their time in a different way. And also uh, that feeling of working from home, being alone with higher amount of tasks to be carried out, uh, the, the idea that we put forward was to invest on the so-called third places, so on the co-working areas. And well, not, I'm not talking only about uh, private co-working places, but also we relied on public co-working places in some spaces which were not used before uh, and on, that on which we could have relied on. So I'm talking about museum areas or uh, public buildings, but also churches or uh, private, the private sector which had been involved. So basically, 
of course, we had to rely on a good internet connection and also the possibility to easily reach these places. So in terms of public transports and the uh, public transport networks allowing people uh, to, to move to these places to meet their colleagues or even their customers. In this way, we opened also to the opportunity to meet local communities and to overcome that idea uh, that the remote working was initially negative, but we introduced the possibility to involve also local communities, which were the, the ones more at risk of suffering from the high costs of this phenomenon. So these things started happening step by step, and we involved young people, local schools, providing re uh, opportunities to give something back to the community. And we also provided some further services like uh, uh, supervisors supporting and helping uh, young students, young workers, creating a kind of a network between all these uh, associations and uh, realities that grew up both in the south and north of Italy as well, trying and aiming at creating and developing this uh, uh, approach also at the uh, institutional level. So involving the institutions and sharing with the institutions the needs that these, uh, these people had. So our goal was to contribute to improve the local communities, of course, and to get closer to the uh, local needs that uh, we found. Considering this uh, a differentiated framework with lights and shadows, um, we uh, are not neoliberalists, uh, and uh, uh, it is important to understand uh, what uh, the public institutions uh, have done and what things to do, what they think to do. The floor is yours, Mr. Vice Minister. Well, I would like to start uh, uh, um, what Mr. Vitadini said. Luckily, there was a step forward in skills and competencies thanks to the pandemic. So something negative brought about a, a positive change. If you think uh, of uh, digital skills, for example, that uh, in particular, uh, well, older people have or had, there was really uh, a quality leap. And so in this case, it was the contrary. What do I mean? I mean that uh, the uh, government received something instead of given, given something. Well, it is a delicate, thorny uh, moment. Uh, uh, for example, um, there have been some discoveries in uh, Cyprus today that we hope uh, will bring about some opportunities in the future. But the fundamental point here is that uh, we need to um, have awareness, uh, um, and this is something that we had also thanks to the uh, National Resilience and Recovery Plan, um, the PNRR. The P this plan uh, highlighted uh, some, um, you know, fragilities, uh, in particular, um, the first one, which is related to, um, you know, the south of Italy, but uh, very often all these challenges and difficulties have been faced uh, by specific interventions or by uh, specific acts. So there are weaknesses. Uh, 
But uh, underlining weaknesses during the pandemic has also meant uh, to, you know, join, to put together the north and the south. I come from the north. Uh, but I can tell you that even in the South, the modern technologies like the uh, internet connection, fiber, um, well, all these things have arrived uh, uh, to all parts of Italy, even though we rank 20th in Europe in terms of digital capacities and digitization. And this is both for companies and for individuals. And there is a, a fundamental passage uh, uh, that has to do with the north and the south, uh, the hinterland, and in particular, the uh, southern areas where there are uh, a lot of rural areas and still uh, require some uh, interventions. A friend of mine said, maybe we need uh, you know, younger students to teach teachers what to do and then uh, uh, move on. For sure, it is important to increase competencies, and that's the first thing to do. The second thing is to use the funds of the PNRR to create the network. Because otherwise, it is useless to talk about best practices um, if in Basilicata, for example, there are uh, friends of mine who cannot uh, connect uh, because they do not have the network uh, or even in the north in the Alps uh, where they cannot uh, work uh, uh, effectively. So if we don't do it, it is useless. The role of the government is to create the infrastructure, the network first, and uh, to let's say, create uh, um, the conditions and improve the levels of ability of people. And we can take up this challenge uh, using the national funds. But it's not just a matter of funds, of money, of investments. Because, you know, one of the uh, most debated topics of this year's meeting has been the national uh, recovery and resilience pan, plan. Uh, uh, when we talk about it, we talk about about 200 uh, billion euros. Uh, but if you think of the 79 billion of the cohesion and development funds, uh, well, 80% of it uh, goes to the south, and then there are another 5 billion from the uh, Fondi Strutturali Ordinali, that is, the structural funds. Then there is React U. So there are overall over 400 billion. There are five times as much as the Marshall Plan. And let me also remind you that uh, it's not just 40% that goes to the south of Italy, it's more than 50% because only SFC accounts for more. So what is the challenge? What is our challenge? The challenge is let's not just stop to welfareism, um, but let's move on go forward uh, apart from the national plan or the different programming um, and after making this kind of assessment we should speed up uh, the uh, investments investments in innovation hubs or centers the Ministry for Economic Development is investing a lot on people with the voucher, the so-called voucher mechanisms, and the other innovation centers that uh, should be scattered all over Italy to support growth, the growth of people and the growth of companies. That well, they they the two growths, let's say, must. Uh, um, be in line. And again, 
uh, considering that I only have 44 seconds left, uh, I want to say that we have always thought uh, of uh, actions uh, in uh, um, you know the most vulnerable areas uh, to take companies uh, in that place. Uh, whereas now the situation is different. It is possible to uh, harness smart working and the co-working. This means that a new business model is uh, um, being created. It comes uh, from a bottom-up approach uh, and uh, it's something different compared to what we were thinking. This is the main challenge that we have uh, both in the south and in other uh, areas in the north of Italy, especially the hinterland. Thank you. Unlike the uh, first debate, um, well, um, we now move to Marco Ceresa. Generally, they uh, talk first. They are representatives that talk first. So I'd like to ask him a question, a five-minute question. So there are big hopes, and I would like to tell something about the story of Haliano. And uh, I was in Milan a few days ago in a canteen, and there was a colleague of mine coming from a country, from Sardinia, and then there was another colleague from uh, Soverato in Calabria, and then another colleague again uh, who was from Sicily. All of them were asking, uh, why are you here and why are you working here? Because there are a lot of opportunities. One of these uh, persons, uh, of these people, uh, had been in Randstad for 10 years, another for 15 years, another for 20 years. Um, then after a few days, I was invited by Mario Dalliano. Um, sorry, I was invited by my friend Mario to Aliano. Um, uh, because, you know, Mario was one of the um, um, heads of Bosch. Uh, and, uh, you know, even in Aliano, it is not common to have this kind of uh, personalities. It was uh, like a he was like a celebrity. And so I went to Aliano for an event and I met some young people there. But then the mayor of Aliano, Luigi, who is here today, told me, that the problem was to, you know, keep people in Aliano because uh, the uh, working opportunities are not so many and uh, a lot of people go away to study, to go to universities. And so on that same day, uh, a person uh, decided to stop working there because uh, he wanted to go back to Bari in Puglia to go back uh, home. And so putting all these things together, um, he told me, well, let's try to open uh, um, an office in Aliano, a uh, Randstad office, in order to you know, give us some opportunities to those who want to build their lives here. And um, you know, a lot of people might have said, no, it's going to be a disaster because there is no network, there are no resources. But uh, I decided to send uh, my human resources manager um, and send her in Aliano. And when she came back, she told me that uh, she had met uh, very good people and uh, prepared people. Uh, and so she didn't know who to choose. And then I sent a surveyor there looking for uh, um, an office. Uh, and he said, you know, I found an office and the cost is the lowest uh, of Italy. Then I sent in Aliano uh, my IT expert and they told me that actually the um, internet connection there was uh, faster than what we have at home. And I asked the mayor, well, is it really like that? Yes, because I asked to, you know, enhance the uh, connection. And so there were all the conditions to set up an office in Aliano. And this is uh, something that happened two years ago, I think. After two years, so after finding the office, uh, setting it up, uh, and I 
went to um, another representative of Randstad and I asked, how are things going in Aliano? Uh, maybe we will need uh, uh, an other members of staff, another five, four or five people. And, uh, you know, all of this has been positive uh, and I think that maybe there will be other Alianos, so to say, in the south. Because, you know, uh, in the north it's uh, difficult to have a stable, long-standing structure uh, because people change, come and go. Um, whereas in Aliano, people remain there and they're also very happy uh, of what they do. So we would like to convince some customers to bring their uh, administration on staff administration in Aliano because we would like them to be specialized in this kind of administration. And then we would like to find another country, another, sorry, another village, another town in the south where maybe there can be offices uh, specialized in accounting or IT and bring people there. Everyone did their part very often. Uh, they say bad things about government, about politicians, but you know, there have been important uh, funds uh, or uh, general support uh, for people to get trained. Uh, and uh, remember also that uh, workers co cost a bit less in the South, but we don't want uh, to um, you know, harness, to take advantage of this situation and try to uh, save uh, too much money. And maybe in the future there will be opportunities uh, also for people who are in Aliano. This is what we did. We created some of, these, some of these opportunities. As for the politics, it is true that the government and politicians and institutions might help, but we need, um, you know, that uh, Young people are uh, trained, are guided, and, uh, you know, um, are helped, supported uh, in doing uh, what they uh, can do for us. So there is nothing negative in this experiment that we uh, had in Aliano. I think that, uh, uh, well, the framework is exhaustive. Now, let's move to the final part. And let's suppose that you are like Aladdin and the genie gives you a special uh, tool to use. What would you do? You have two minutes each. Well, I think we should start thinking that uh, work is a big opportunity for people, people that are lacking uh, as of today in several companies. And uh, that's, well, whereas companies uh, need to grow. So human capital is the main um, element for development. And we need to be able to, you know, build it up to value it and not just, uh, you know, moving it around uh, meaning from the south to the north, for example. And this is an element that uh, uh, can be enhanced where it is. Um, and we need a clear awareness of the fact that uh, human capital is core and it's maybe the primary element for development. I think I'd start from uh, the uh, incentives uh, for uh, creating new uh, you know, centers in those areas where there are no private companies that are willing to invest. And so, um, have, uh, for example, uh, mayors or uh, encourage mayors uh, to make some funds available for this. 
And then there's another point uh, which is very important in my opinion uh, and uh, it's transport because very often those who go back to the south uh, find uh, uh, quite a you know negative uh, reality Very often uh, it is difficult to have uh, the right uh, maintenance of structures and facilities there, but this should be the priority of local and regional authorities in the south and uh, uh, in the center uh, of Italy, starting from railways, but also from roads uh, needed for transport in general, because, you know, people who go back there uh, would like to keep on moving around, uh, they are curious, uh, they don't want to stay uh, all year round in a small town or a village, so it is fundamental uh, to avoid uh, uh, that people leave these areas, um, it is fundamental to allow them to have the right infrastructures, um, the right facilities, uh, the right uh, transport, the right social structures, and the right uh, network for them to um, harness as much as they can the place where they live and keep on uh, uh, a lifestyle that is in line with uh, what they have done uh, so far and is also uh, suitable for uh, the future of our uh, local areas. Earlier on, I talked about infrastructures. So again, we need the network, we need the structures, and we need, uh, again, physical infrastructures that are lacking very often. It is clear that we cannot uh, uh, do a revolution in a fortnight, but we can invest starting from the bottom, starting from the uh, grassroots, starting from uh, very young people, from children, uh, nurseries even. And considering the National Plan for Recovery and Resilience, uh, it is maybe more effective to start from uh, children. Um, maybe someone might say that uh, in a different kind of government, uh, uh, things should work differently, but I think that uh, we should uh, underline the importance of human capital, because if we rank, um, let's say, very low, we have a very low rank, it's because we cannot uh, take up and win this kind of challenge. We need to have the, the, the structures we need, uh, we, we, we need to have the uh, facilities, and we need to make human capital grow. And this is everyone's challenge, not just the challenge of the government, uh, of public authorities, because it is a cultural challenge that uh, all people should take up. Allora, eh, io mh, penso prima di tutto che bisogna avere bene in mente We should bear in mind that there is a difference between those who have ideas and those who take actions. Randstad likes to have people who act. So we need to be optimistic and if someone does something and makes a mistake, this is not a problem, but we should never think, uh, well, you know, you were wrong, you made a mistake, so you need to be punished uh, or um, laughed at. 
Going back to Aliano, because we are here to talk about it, I found this uh, ability, this incredible ability uh, to take action, to do something. We need the network? Okay, let's create the network. We need, uh, um, you know, the infrastructure? Let's do it. And uh, as for school, maybe we would rather uh, study uh, more practical things rather than, I don't know, uh, Egyptians. Um, so maybe focusing on the latest centuries for young people to understand what happened, but not so much uh, on the uh, very far away past. This is an idea that we have at Randstad uh, and that uh, we should be able to uh, put into practice uh, being close to schools so that there are people who are trained enough uh, to, to ensure, to guarantee that there is a future for our country. And the second point is, um, you know, do uh, something for uh, children to you know, start being born again uh, in this uh, country because we should really do whatever we can um, to support families and have more children or attract uh, more people because this is a serious point. 36 years ago, we uh, were working on the De Vito uh, Act. It was a uh, piece of law that was very interesting that we also mentioned yesterday evening. There was uh, this uh, development plan for the south of Italy and uh, it worked uh, until uh, the 1970s, creating uh, job uh, opportunities and employment. Um, and it uh, created a lot of money like the uh, aqueduct in Polia that uh, um, actually wastes uh, a lot of water. We should identify people who are able to create something new, but there's a limit because, you know, as uh, Mr. Cereza was saying, uh, if you have the ideas and you don't take actions, you are lacking something. So having the starting points, but also knowing where we should head. The collaboration between private and public bodies is meant for this, creating uh, agencies, organizations, uh, create job opportunities and provide them with the right uh, structures, the right facility uh, that they need, the water that they need to survive. There must be clear conditions uh, in the market of the south of Italy. There must be uh, the right basis uh, and uh, the right people. It has happened uh, very often that uh, uh, the state, uh, the government made decisions from above, so to say, and were not so effective, whereas this bottom-up approach uh, creates uh, some, uh, um, you know, some uh, experiences that uh, can really lay the basis for a further development. Uh, yesterday evening and in other moments uh, of the meeting, we uh, mentioned uh, um, some new opportunities as such uh, as uh, sewers or investing in ports, uh, investing in infrastructures. This is something that uh, we want to, you know, start doing. The national plan, uh, for example, focuses on uh, um, enhancing and uh, um, 
improving uh, transport of goods uh, on uh, railway rather than uh, uh, road transport as it is now. And uh, this collaboration, the work among this community, uh, like today we have here a professor, an association, a vice minister, and a CEO uh, of the most important uh, uh, employment agency. Uh, well, all these people or these figures uh, can work together and collaborate not only here at the meeting. And this is like uh, kicking off uh, uh, the future. <laughs> La civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo.